for me. A little while back, he came to my shop asking if I could make a finesse skid wheel. <laughs> uh, oh, I give up saying that word. <laughs> now flat up knocked me out of my chair. He's a man who almost never asks for favors. He's pretty damn... What is that? Brusque? 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 I don't know. <laughs> he's pretty damn brusque and he's got a tongue sharp enough to cut steel, but he's not wicked to his core, I swear. So please, man, be a pillar of support for him. She just leaves. <laughs> In that moment, the wheel became a precious treasure to me. We had only just married days earlier. And yet he had commissioned it for me without even knowing what I looked like. I was filled with a warm elation. I agreed with the owner. Hakobo was not a bad man. He merely had difficulty expressing himself. Mm, no, not really. I mean, with what I guess seen the the thing that really kind of got to me was when he when he was talking about it doesn't matter how many people he employs that die while creating the right. railroad. And then he also made that really racist comment. It was like, and if we run out of employee, we can just get some blacks and yellows. And, and I'm just like, oh. Mm. Mm. But this was this uh, right now is in the past, right? Uh, this moment, yeah, this is in the past. So, at this point in time, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Hurrying back to the carriage, I gave him my deepest thanks. He glanced over at me for a moment, then turned back towards the window and muttered, Yeah, what a sundere. <laughs> <laughs> From there, we went to a restaurant for dinner. Do you call this a pizza? This crust is an atrocity. It's like I'm chewing on... All right, Gordon Ramsay, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> How can you wave my country's flag and not serve spaghetti? Do you have no shame at all? This wine is pitifully unbalanced. Far too high levels of acidity. Listen to me carefully. The house wine is the face of a restaurant. He complained about every little thing. It was a complete disaster. But curiously enough, I was not at all put off by his behavior. When the sun set, the carriage made its way to a nearby hill. The cool nighttime breeze felt wonderful on my skin, flushed from the alcohol, and the light from the gas lamps had a comforting warmth to it. Though Hakobo had complained about the quality of the wine, once he had intoxicated himself, his mood improved visibly. It made him unexpectedly talkative. Look out at the city. A gloomy town that shuts down at night isn't suited to expansion or growth, but the city isn't like that. You can see people walking beneath the lamps, and you can hear the bustle of them talking. This is a city that still has plenty of room to grow. As they ride the rising waves of the economy, many, many more people will gather here. More people means more money in circulation. More money in circulation means the city grows. Companies are founded and more goods are brought and sold. Will it really change so drastically? It can be difficult to see what's happening from the inside. The majority of people just go about their daily lives, and the next thing they know, things are different. No, I'd wager most don't notice the changes at all. Only those with eyes sharp enough to realize what's happening can see success. I cannot afford to overlook even the most my minute, right? Yep. The minute change. Do you have a dream of some kind? A dream? I'm not sure if it's easy enough to attain to call a dream. 
Others might call it greed, or perhaps ambition. <laughs> Don't laugh now. My intention is to make the world mine. The world? Yes, the world. And to do that, you need neither physical strength nor kindness, but money and influence. People have no choice but to kneel before those forces. Why are you so intent on obtaining power? Because... I want to change my country, I imagine. Your country? You are aware that I, like you, am an immigrant, right? I emigrated from an island in the Mediterranean, though not the same island as you. My country is a peculiar place where candor and violence go hand in hand. As a whole, the country is on the poor side, and if nobody does anything about that, I am one but of a few of my fellow countrymen who have set his sights out on the new world. They are falling far behind other nations. If I find success here, perhaps that will catch their attention. But if it doesn't, then my country is doomed to collapse. You have much love for your homeland. My feelings are... A little more complicated than mere love. But that's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Well, I'll have to remember not to get myself drunk around the woman again. <laughs> Forget everything I just said. It's about time we head back to the house. All right, but, um... What is it? Is it all right if I provide you encouragement as you try to attain your dream? You know my presence is more likely to be a hindrance, but I would like to be there to watch as you trek forward. I suppose. Do as you wish. Thank you. You have my support, then. Um, darling? Mm. Sent a shiver down my spine, though not an unpleasant one. I am glad to have you as my partner. I was, without a doubt, happy then. His smile, the things he said, the wheel he gave me, they were all undeniably real. Those memories give me the will to wait. For the day things go back to the way they were. They allow me to believe. Hmm, I wonder what changed. Maybe, like, influences? I guess, yeah, that would make sense. Especially, especially if that was a while ago. The business world is a nasty one. Hmm. This is something that actually happened to another bird. <laughs> Beastie, is that you? No! <laughs> <laughs> she heard a sound in the middle of the night. A sound like dripping water. At first, she thought it was raining, so she looked through the window, and there wasn't a cloud in the sky to cover the stores. Maybe it's a faucet, she thought, so she stepped out of her room and into the corridor. Compared to her room, it was unearthly chilly. The maid regretted not bringing something to cover herself with. But that didn't make any sense. Normally, the temperature wasn't that much colder outside her room. Her night clothes had always been more than enough for a trip to the lavatory. Wondering what the reason could be, she made her way towards the sound. But then, she realized something. 
There were no faucets in the direction she was going. Rather, she was headed toward a hall. The mansion where she served had many halls, but this one was off in a corner of the house, the least used hall of them all. It had a high roof, but not a lot of space, so it was difficult to make good use of. It also had a somewhat heavy air to it, a very curious room. It was the kind of place you might assign someone to clean as part of their hazing. <laughs> oh. Anyway, when the maid realized the sound was coming from that particular hall, she, as you might expect, let out an uncomfortable sigh. <laughs> that, that was such a sound of genuine distress. <laughs> <laughs> But there might be a leak, and having noticed, she couldn't simply ignore it, you know? So, as much as she hesitated, she pushed open the doors to the hall. There was nobody there, and it didn't look like anything was leaking, either. There were no puddles or water stains anywhere to be found. But she could still hear the sound, drip, drip, getting louder and louder. Slowly stepping further into the room, looking left, then right, then left again, she searched for the source of the sound, coming to a stop in the center of the hall. She stood there still, quiet, and then, a chilly spot in the nape of her neck. With a little yelp, she reached back to feel her neck, but it wasn't wet. Confused, she slowly, warily tilted her head backward. And there hung a bloody skeleton from the ceiling! <laughs> oh, that's no! Oh, I'm so sorry, Maria. <laughs> that was a cool scream. <laughs> <laughs> That's rich! Amazing! Oh my god, you scream like a little girl! Do you want to take a couple? Okay. Uh. Hmm. Maria, you little. <gasps> my god, are you men or children? This is my house, and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Whose words were those again? Sh shut your mouth. How do you even know about that? Were you eavesdropping? I don't know a thing. I do not care for that sort of stupid fantastical tales you women so love to pass around. Because they scare you. Ah, you've never been able to handle anything scary, Hakopo. <clears throat> Whoa, don't glare at me like that. You're gonna destroy my side. So, did you come here for the sole purpose of telling that cheap tripe? Acting tough after the fact just makes you look twice as much of a wuss. Well, I mean, I did make up a good half of it. But the maid really did hear a sound in the middle of the night. And it came from the back hall of this very mansion. Did you know? They say it used to be a chapel. Again, I have no interest in you women's little ghost stories. Is that so? You sure you're not just scared? Maria! Well, that said, the rumors aren't completely unfounded. That it, this is a pretty old mansion, and it has a lot of work done on it. Kinda feels like it's barely holding itself together. Like a big old quilt with pieces from all different time periods. Oh, how little you know, Maria. <laughs> or maybe you do know. Hmm. The back hall is one of the oldest patches. There's a huge window on the far end, and supposedly, there used to be stained glass in it. 
It was a depiction of an archangel, they say. Such a shame. I wonder when it was broken. If it were still there, I'd bet it'd be worth a fortune. I find that hard to believe. First of all, why would anyone put a chapel inside of a mansion? Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, so I used to... In high school, I went to this... I was a charity student at this preparatory school. So I was like one among three minorities and I was... And we were all super poor while everyone else around us was super rich. And uh, I made friends with this one girl. And she invited me and a bunch of people over to her house one day for a sleepover. So it was so far away and like it was a, a huge house. So huge. And she asked, I don't remember what it was. I think someone asked me to go fetch something up in one of their rooms. And I ended up getting lost. And I entered this room that was like a chapel. It was, it had stained glass and this giant cross. And I felt so freaked out <laughs> because, because and, and it got worse because they had like this weird, it was sort of like a little vent system, but it was made specifically for like talk, you know, since it was such a huge house, it was like made specifically for like trying to find people. And so since it was taking me such a long time to get back, they used that and I swear I jumped like a foot in the air because of course I didn't know a <laughs> single thing about it and I just entered this huge like brightly lit chapel and out of nowhere I just hear this voice going uh Emily where are you? <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I nearly crapped all my organs out. <laughs> 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 You've got a point, I guess. Now, how about you do some actual work instead of distracting yourself with all this nonsense? I do work. But, uh. The other maids can be a bit. nasty, you know? Dealing with other women is like walking on glass. And I to blame for that. What if I said you were? <laughs> Don't give me that look. They're just not fond of me. Simple as that. Nothing you can do about it. Is that so? Oh yeah, I was talking to the madam, and she was telling me you used to be quite the gentleman. Were you perhaps actually in love back then? You sure don't act like it, so it's easy to miss, but I guess you're not made entirely out of steel. Just like when you were younger, you're still- Do not speak of that. The past is not worth remembering. It is unnecessary. So to you, the past exists just to be cast aside. I... Nah, it's not important. You don't want me to talk about it? I won't talk about it. But your wife... Never mind. I'll leave you be. Let me take her. <laughs> I have to get back to work soon, or I'll be staring down the headmate's arctic smile. Uh, alright. If the fancy strikes me, I'll drop by and we can trade more ghost stories. <laughs> that face! <laughs> Maria. Hmm? What? No ghost stories? N no, not that. I have not forgotten those days. But... No, it's... I... I'll be off then. Alright. If a fancy strikes you, drop by and we can trade something other than ghost stories. 
<laughs> what I tell you. I'll consider it. Goodbye. God damn it. I can't escape anything. Hmm. Well, now we know they used to know each other when they were younger. Yeah. <sighs> They've grown to be so beautiful. Such a wonderful fragrance. Uh, that looks like there's a bunch of cobwebs all around her. I don't yeah. like it. The scent of roses is so calming. I wonder why that is. Would it cause me any trouble if I picked one? Wanna take one? Uh, who do you want to be? Uh, I can continue with white-haired girl. Okay. Well, hello there. Out for a midnight stroll, are you? Quite the peculiar hobby. Madam. Uh, um, I cannot spend as much time as I would like outside during the day, so I end up coming out at night. I apologize if I startled you. Oh no, not at all. There is a chilling, captivating beauty to the sight of your snow-white form standing there in the moonlight garden. I'm very gay. <laughs> I would hardly... Um, what are you doing out so late? I saw a figure through the window. On the slight chance it might be a burglar, I thought it might... It, uh, I thought it my responsibility to ensure they did not break in. It was also the middle of the night when the grocer's servant broke into their safe. News of that spread quite far. I am sure you would have heard about it. Oh, but Gimash was in prison some time ago. Dear me, cannot seem to get my head out of the past. Uh, um... Do you intend to give that white rose to someone? Y yes I was thinking about giving it to my husband. Well, I expect he has little fondness for such feminine, feminine taste. The scent of flowers has a truly calming effect. He might find it relaxing when he needs a reprieve from his work. Oh, is that so? You are very kind-hearted. Speaking of white roses, the rose he meant to give you was the same shade of white. Oh? He? He? But when you touched it, it turned a deep shade of red. Is she talking, She's about... talking about one of the timelines? I think he might be talking about Mel? Yeah, I think he mentioned something about like how... He meant to get a white flower for her, but then it he couldn't he 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 assumed it had died before he got a chance to get to it, I think. And then didn't she touch it and it turned black? Mm-hmm. So I wonder if that's what she's talking about. Yeah, exactly. Oh, was it red? I thought it turned black. There was but a single white rose in the garden, so he was unable to give it to you as he had wished. In its place, he had a decorative rose fashioned for you. Yeah, she's talking about Mel. Um, what exactly are you referring to? Oh dear, do you not remember? Then am I to assume you have forgotten what happened to the rose accessory as well? He was unable to give that to you either. But that time, because you rejected the gift. I am not criticizing you for that decision, of course. You had a perfectly good reason for not accepting it. Heartbroken from having lost you, he buried the rose in this garden. Over the years, the roses in the garden were away. 
and in their place grew a thick, unsightly nest of weeds. Many, many years later, that accessory was dug up by a beast. And curiously enough, it had not a speck of rust on it. A beast? A beast! Please come back! You do not remember him either? The foreign man who, through his interaction with you, almost regained his humanity. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I'm gonna go, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you speak of. I'm gay. <laughs> the only gift I have ever received from a man is my wheel. And furthermore, I have only lived in this mansion for a year. While well, the carding was not as thriving as it is now, it was certainly not in ruins when I arrived. Because I had been taking care of it, yes. But for whatever reason, by my hands alone, I was unable to make it into anything quite as splendid as it is now. Once you arrived and began to work on it, however, just look around. You have restored it to its former glory to the magnificence of the flaxen-haired family's time. I promise I am not trying to fault you for anything. Now that I think about it, it makes sense you would not remember. Though you are still you, you are different than before. Different, though not in the sense you are a wholly distinct person. Tell me, is your name again? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Yes, but you should already know that. <laughs> again. More proof that you are indeed you. Did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person you are waiting for? Huh? What? What? The... What? What you talking about, maid? What are you talking about? I have met you many times, and I know of your past, of events that transpired long, long ago. Um, I I'm telling you the truth. I first came to this mansion just a year ago. Until then, I had never left my country, or even set foot outside my own house. We did not have any servants either. So... so where, then, are you saying we met? This mansion, of course. But I am telling the truth. It was a year ago. Shortly after my parents fell ill and received an offer for my marriage. I knew something had to be done. I knew it, and... And so I... So I... I'm... Telling the truth. If that is what you remember, then I do not doubt you. But I also suspect I know why you seem so flustered. Are there moments when your memories seem hazy? When it seems like important details have fallen through the cracks? You needn't fret. Ugh, not ugh. You needn't fret. One day, eventually, you shall remember all. One day. So. We're basically... Okay, so does she basically spell out that the master is the white-haired girl? I mean, that really does seem... She hasn't said anything straight out, but more and more, that does seem to be the implication. It's like, one day you'll remember everything, and mm -hmm. she's currently, like, taking us on a road trip back on the mansion's pa past and stuff. Yeah. I mean... That, that does seem to be the case. I just hope that they're not, like, just, you know, giving us a red herring or something. Yeah. Wanna take it again? 
What the hell is this? A white rose. Did she leave this here? A flower. What does she think she's doing? Is she trying to aggravate me? That garden. The damn rose garden is the whole problem. Flowers serve no purpose but to deceive. That garden is a sign of weakness. It has no place in this house. Oh, oh, you're so strong being threatened. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Sword Art Online Lost Song. This is Konetsu. And we are finally going to finish up Woglinde. It's been a while, and I don't know, I'm kind of ready to see a new island. Um, I chose Kirito this time just because. Just because Streya, I don't know. I like Streya as a character, but as a playable one, uh, she is not my favorite. I'm doing much better this week. I'm not as tired as I was last time, so. What? Oh my god! What? Ooh. Oh no! 